invite better, more dignified, more liberated candidates, men and women from wherever they are, to come into the process, rather than what we have now, which is an increasing number of people from all parties who are just uh, um, buying the offices that they have. I'm no fan of Corzine. I'm a Democrat. I thought what Corzine did in New Jersey was disgusting. He shoved his hand in his pocket. He, was he made all the money he needed to make. Uh, and he shoved his hand in his pocket, and it was a very deep pocket, and he pulled out a wad of $100 million and bought himself the Senate seat in New Jersey. That's what he did. Was Corzine the best candidate for office? How will we ever know? You're never going to know that until you have public financing of campaigns. In this city, Bloomberg is the mayor of this city again. What would Bloomberg's message be if he had to go out and sell it in the way that most people have to go out and sell it and raise money on that message? He shoved his hand in his pocket and he wrote a check for $80 million and he bought the mayoralty of New York City. The fact that Schwarzenegger is the governor of California is the low point in American political life. And it has nothing to do with his personality. No, but it has nothing to do with his personality, people who mock his accent and all those other th th things. It's the fact that we're living in a society right now, when you take a picture of where we are right now, when you take a picture of how we are living in this society right now, you're talking about a guy who had zero qualifications. Zero. You could be the president of a high school Republican club and have more qualifications to be the governor of the, of the state of California, the biggest state and the most economically powerful state in this country, and a guy with no experience whatsoever. None. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> is the governor of the state of California. But that party today is very fond of that kind of candidate. The guy that's the pitch man, the guy that's the front man, the guy that's the game show host, who's really up there just to read a script, and all the decisions and all the thinking are really being done by somebody else. Now, they probably have the courtesy and the decency to sit him in a room and say, listen, you're going to say this and this, let's just do a little primer for you. And the reason you're going to say this about immigration is because of this. And he sits there, you know, maybe he doesn't doze off. Like other governors of California we've known. And he sits there and he, and he absorbs. Maybe he wants to learn. Maybe he wants to change. Maybe he wants to grow. But think about what happened out there. This is connected to campaign finance reform. There's so much shit hitting the fan in our society. We were all told, if Vietnam falls, if Vietnam falls, if Vietnam falls, watch out. Vietnam can't fall. And Vietnam fell. And who gives a shit that Vietnam fell? It had made no difference in our lives whatsoever. And a bunch of old guys with an old playbook, with an old mentality, with an old view of the world, sold you in that idea. And the world was changing, and the sands were shifting right under their feet, but they kept reading from that playbook. And Vietnam fell, and it didn't make any difference in the world to us as Americans on a day-to-day -day basis. I look at these people, I look and I say to myself, these are people who are war people. That's all they do. That's all they had when they came into office. They were a, an administration that was geared for war. They weren't geared for uh, education. They weren't geared for health care. They weren't even geared for infrastructure. The infrastructure of this country is shameful. You drive through a lot of major cities in this country, it looks like Peru. Bridges, roads, I mean, it's, the country's falling apart on an infrastructure level. And my point is, is that you can have Google and you can have all these other things, and I think that the two are completely unrelated. But the, but the problem for me is that you have a group of people that came in post 9-11 and they said, you know, these are the guys that are going to get this straightened out. You know, want, you know we're going to get Bin Laden dead and alive. I, mean, I really didn't pay very much attention to that. But it wasn't just that they were so singular-minded. It was that they were so singular-minded at the expense of everything else. They don't have anything else. They don't have an effective public policy in any other area. They don't have an answer to health care. They don't have an answer to Social Security. They're not solving the problems down in the Gulf. They're not solving any problems anywhere. And they're turning to you and they're saying, well, that's not what we do. That's not what we do. You know, we're war people. We're fighters. We're military people. And we're going to go over there to Iraq and we're going to do this. And they haven't gotten that done either. There's only one thing they advertised that they would do, and they didn't get that done. I'm not talking about the economy. You're talking about a wing of your party that's the economic side of your party. I'm not talking about that. I might, I might have my disagreements with them as well. But I'm saying, th these guys that came in, they advertised, we are the can-do, go-to people for one part of public policy, and that's war-making. And they screwed that up, in my opinion. They blew that.